Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 717. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why Warren Buffett sold 100% of his four airlines. Now, recently I did a podcast where I talked about how Warren Buffett sold off part of his airline holdings, and a lot of people were very surprised by that because Warren Buffett is known as a person who, when the chips are down and there's more value to be had and he can buy at lower prices, he usually takes advantage of that. So for him to be selling when prices are down, well, that's just downright shocking. But there also is a new rule where you have to mark to market. And that means that he had to take a $50 billion loss because of that mark to market rule. So this was not a fun time for Mr. Buffett. And recently, he was holding his Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting online, and he gave some details about why he sold the airline. So we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to give you my insights as to why I think he really sold the airlines, reading between the lines and maybe adapting his investment style to where we are now, and giving you a little bit more insight than maybe what he said or was able to say at this time. So I want to share an article with you. This is from CNBC and it was written by Leslie Josephs. And it says, a 95% plunge in passengers, billions in losses, a rush for new debt, a recovery that executives expect to take years. Coronavirus is roiling the airline industry and the Oracle of Omaha has seen enough. Warren Buffett told investors Saturday that Berkshire Hathaway has sold its entire stakes in the four largest U.S. airlines, American, Delta, Southwest, and United. As the pandemic upends another bet on the sector that the famed investor had shunned for years before a surprise return in 2016. And I just want to pause there, and that is because... A lot of people have said that airlines are terrible investments. So it was kind of surprising that he got into them in the first place in 2016. And unfortunately, now it's played out the way that he feared. But we'll get into more of that in just a minute. The article goes on to say, An embittered Buffett said in 2007 investor letter, quote, If a far-sighted capitalist had been present at Kitty Hawk, he would have done his successors a huge favor by shooting Orville down and referred to a soured bet on U.S. Air in the 1990s. The airline industry's demand for capital ever since that first flight has been insatiable. Investors have poured money into a bottomless pit, attracted by growth when they should have been repelled by it, he continued. So let's just pause there and say, since the coronavirus has hit, Some airlines are losing as much as $90 million a day. So this is definitely a money pit. And that's why the government has stepped in to the tune of $25 billion to help the airlines. The article goes on to say, But in late 2016, Buffett again warmed to the industry. Known for their cycles of boom and bust, U.S. airlines were riding a steady wave of profits and enjoyed the spoils of a collapse in fuel prices, generally their biggest expense after labor. Berkshire became one of the biggest shareholders in the big U.S. four, with a stake of close to 10% in each carrier. Those were worth close to $4 billion, according to the latest fact set data. In the fall of 2017, his stakes in those airlines were valued at more than $9 billion. In February 2018, Buffett told CNBC he wouldn't rule out owning an entire airline. All four carriers hit all-time highs in the years after Berkshire took its big stakes. 
But airlines are one of the industries hardest hit by the coronavirus, and their share prices have plummeted by a far greater degree than the S&P 500's 12% drop this year. American shares have lost 63%. United's have shed 70%. Delta's are off 59%, and Southwest's are down 46% since the start of the year. And it turned out I was wrong about the business because of something that was not in any way the fault of four excellent CEOs, Buffett said Saturday in Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting, which was webcast because of the pandemic and travel restrictions. Berkshire reported a net loss of close to $50 billion in the first three months of the year. I mean, believe me, no joy being a CEO of an airline. But the companies we bought were well managed. They did a lot of things right. U.S. carriers in recent weeks posted their first losses in years and have warned investors that the second quarter is looking even more dismal as the virus and measures to stop it from spreading, like shelter-in-place orders, are keeping would-be travelers away from airports. The slump has also hit aircraft manufacturers like Boeing, as the pandemic and financial turmoil all but dries up demand for new jetliners and raises the threat of cancellations and deferrals of existing orders. Berkshire is exposed to that dynamic through its $32 billion deal in 2015 to acquire aircraft parts supplier Precision Cast Parts. For airlines, the timing couldn't be worse. The second and third quarters are the most lucrative for U.S. travelers as spring and summer vacations spur bookings. While no one has a perfect crystal ball, I think we all expect that recovery will be slow and demand for air travel will be suppressed for quite some time, American Airlines CEO Doug Parker told investors last week upon reporting a $2.2 billion net loss. Delta CEO Ed Bastian last month said it would likely take two or three years for air travel demand to recover, a forecast later echoed by Boeing CEO. While we cannot speak to individual shareholders' decisions about buying and selling shares in Delta, we have tremendous respect for Mr. Buffett and the Berkshire team, Delta said in a statement. We remain confident that the strengths that are core to Delta's business, our people, our brand, our network, and our operational reliability, will endure and position Delta to succeed as a better, stronger, and more resilient airline in the future. American Airlines and Southwest Airlines declined to comment. United didn't immediately respond to a request to comment. Airlines are bleeding cash and are racing to cut costs, parking hundreds of jetliners, canceling thousands of flights, and urging employees to take unpaid or partially paid leave. Tens of thousands of staff members have taken them up on that offer. They have suspended dividends and share buybacks for the foreseeable future. Airlines are raising new debt to help weather the crisis and more leverage may be on the way. Well, you have to pay that back out of earnings over some period of time, Buffett told shareholders. United and Southwest have also turned to equity sales to raise money. U.S. carriers last month started to receive portions of government aid, including $25 billion in a mix of loans and grants that require them not to involuntarily furlough or cut the pay rates of some of their 750,000 employees through September 30th. They also expect to receive portions of another $25 billion in other low-cost loans earmarked for the industry under the $2.2 trillion CARES Act. But airline executives expect to emerge much smaller. We made a promise to our people and to American taxpayers to avoid involuntary furloughs or cuts to pay for U.S. employees until the end of September. That's a promise we'll keep, said United's President Scott Kirby, who takes the reins as CEO on May 20th. But if demand remains significantly diminished on October 1st, we simply won't be able to endure this crisis as a company without implementing some of the more difficult and painful actions. These include decisions on involuntary furloughs, further reductions in hours, as well as other actions that will have an immediate impact on our people and their livelihood. Kirby added, we simply cannot and will not risk the long-term future of United and the jobs the airline supports just because the short-term decisions are really hard. But the chances for harsh cost-cutting measures to resize wasn't enough to convince Buffett to hang around and see how it plays out. If we like a business, we're going to buy as much of it as we can and keep it as long as we can, he said. And when we change our mind, we don't take half measures. End of article. 
All right, so let's do a little bit of analysis. First of all, they did mention Boeing in here. And one of the interesting things is that Boeing just had a big debt offering. That means that they were able to offer debt into the market and people oversubscribed for it. That means there were more people who wanted to buy Boeing's debt and their bonds than they had available. That's a good thing for Boeing. That's a good problem for Boeing to have. And that means that companies like the airlines are going to be able to issue debt. And while nobody likes to take on debt, it's a good thing because interest rates are very low. And it's a good thing that there are buyers of that debt. Typically, these would be pension plans and insurance companies. And so that's great that the offerings are in demand and that people want to buy their bonds. They're looking for income and so the bonds are selling. But here's what Mr. Buffett didn't say. You see, Warren Buffett always looks at balance sheets and when you take on more debt, that means your balance sheet is changing significantly. He did mention that the payment for the debt would have to come out of earnings. So that means they're going to have more debt and they're going to have lower earnings. So neither one of those are really attractive for him as an investor. The second thing is that there aren't going to be any stock buybacks because they're not going to have excess cash to be able to buy back their stock. And if they take the government in as a partner, which they already have, That means that they've agreed to not buy back any of their stock. The third thing is they've already cut their dividends. So that means whatever income stream was going to Berkshire Hathaway has now stopped. And so that's not as appealing to Warren Buffett as well. Number four, the U.S. government is now the partner of the airlines. And so Warren would have to essentially sort of move out of the way because the government is going to get their return on investment first. You see, the government has the right to purchase the shares in the future at this low price today. And should the stock price rebound, that's going to dilute the share. So that is unappealing to Berkshire as a partner. And number five, Berkshire likes to have that margin of safety. That's where you can buy the stock well below what the company is worth. And that provides a margin of safety so that if the stock price does decline, it doesn't hurt you so badly. Well, that margin of safety is completely gone. So there's no protection for any further downside that the airlines may experience. And they might have further downside if people don't return to flying anytime soon. And they might have more downside if it takes two to three years or maybe even longer for people to get back to the rates of travel that they originally were at before the virus happened. And number six, this will free up some cash for other opportunities that Mr. Buffett might want to invest in. There are going to be other great opportunities out there And unlike the airlines, which are losing cash hand over fist and are way down in sales, it might be that way for several years and have taken on more debt and the government as a partner. Well, you can see that was just too many negatives for Warren Buffett to hang on. Warren Buffett is someone who is a value buyer, not a growth buyer. And a lot of the companies that have been doing well in the last several years have been growth-oriented companies, trading at high price-to-earnings multiples. And those that might not even have a lot of earnings or cash flow, but people are investing in them because of the future. Companies like Amazon and Tesla are companies that are spending a lot of money building out big infrastructure for future profits, but they're not exactly that profitable right now. Warren Buffett invests differently. He invests in companies that have strong balance sheets, that have very little debt, that have good cash flow and dividends, and they're very conservative companies. So while it's shocking for Warren Buffett to take a big loss because his rule number one is don't lose money, And rule number two is don't forget rule number one. Well, he just lost a lot of money and his shareholders lost a lot of money. 
But I think he also realizes that his style of investing is going to be in demand again. While it's been out of favor as everyone's been chasing the high tech stocks and as I mentioned, companies that are building out infrastructure but don't have a lot of cash flow or profits right now, people are going to be appreciating value companies more. They're going to be appreciating companies that have a lot of cash flow, little debt, that are selling below what they're really worth, and maybe even selling below what the cash value is on their books. I think Warren Buffett realizes he's in the catbird seat because people are going to be flocking to businesses like his as we rotate away from growth toward more value-oriented companies in a more conservative manner going forward. So for him, he would rather take his losses, stop the hemorrhaging from those four airline companies and redirect his efforts and his cash pile to future bargains that are going to present themselves. So I will report to you when he starts buying, but I don't anticipate him buying just yet. We might see him buy something later on in the summer, but for now, I think he's going to be mulling over all of the plethora of opportunities that are going to be presented to him as he has a big cash pile available and companies that have been value oriented and have been out of favor the last few years might be available for him to bring into his stable of companies for the future. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit that subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, we have a whole wealth mentoring library of all of the Be Wealthy and Smart podcasts on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. There's a search box in the upper right hand corner and you can search whatever topic you want to know more about. And if you're ready to get your finances in order, check out my book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now. You get your millionaire action plan, you will learn about the wealth building formula and the six steps to wealth, everything you need to do to get to financial freedom faster. And if you're interested in my inner investing circle, the VIP experience, fill out the short questionnaire in the show notes and let's set up a time to talk. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.